What is the stupidest real men don't blank you've ever heard? Story 1. A guy at work described something his daughter did as cute, and then some douche told him that men aren't supposed to call things cute. A little kid told me that when I said his little drawing was cute, boys aren't allowed to say cute or pretty. My dad said that to me once. I mean, not with those exact words. He told me that. Thankfully, my dad got better with age and let go of his toxic masculinity a little more. He's still a boomer and still carries some of the teachings of his dad. My grandfather, who was as homophobic and as cold as they come, but honestly, he's changed for the better a lot. I mean, he even knows I'm gay and met my ex, so he's definitely doing better in that regard. Guys can be whatever they want to be, even cute. Story 2. Real men don't put cream in their coffee. I responded with, real men don't give a shit what other men think of their beverage choices. Real men live their lives with no care for others' expectations. Eat what you want, drink what you want, and do what you want. I work with a manly-looking paramedic. Stout, full beard, drives a pickup he actually works on, and all of that, and has been in a relationship for 10 years with a manly man. Stout, weightlift, truck, fireman, beard, all that. They both freely admit they are basic white batches at heart as they order their fancy coffees. Daily, they drink black coffee because they are men. Take them to a fancy coffee shop, the medic orders a caramel macchiato with three other things, and the fireman orders a strawberry mocha frap with a shot of espresso. No whipped cream, as that is gay. They make no pretense of their fancy drinks because they do enough manly things the rest of the day to make up for it. Highly amusing every time. Masculinity is what you make it, so why not make it right? Story 3. Not sure if it counts, but a young woman wouldn't sell me a Luna bar because it's made for women. I said, no, it's marketed to women, but I like this flavor. She said, I can't sell it to you, it has estrogen in it. We had a frustrating back and forth before I finally convinced her that I was willing to take the risk, and she sold it to me. A former school colleague had to interview people about genetic engineering fears, and she got replies like, tomatoes with genes might make me red. Don't underestimate human ingenuity in completely getting things wrong. Sounds like the soy myth. If I'm not mistaken, Luna bars have soy protein. Soy contains phytoestrogens, and the bodybuilding community, with the help of a few medical grifters, became convinced that these compounds would behave the same way as estrogen in the body and cause feminization and reduce testosterone levels. It's a crock of shit, obviously. Anyone who's taken middle school science will know that compounds with similar chemical compositions can behave in wildly different ways. The science just isn't science on this one. Story 4. My friends once introduced me to this guy who was talking really loudly. I thought maybe he didn't realize how loud he was being, so I said, you're a little loud. The dude said, real men talk loud. Chicks like that. I did not like that. Every time he says something just responds with a what? Like you can't hear him. Continue until someone else tells him to shut up or his vocals are shot and he can't barely even talk anymore. Sometimes you just have to use people's stupidity against them. Story 5. Real men don't read the instructions. Literally my entire family. They are shocked that a little teenage me was able to assemble the dog kennel so fast. Yeah, it's because I read the damn instructions. I'm an engineer. I not only want to read the instructions, but I also want to read the entire installation process before I start anything. I want to know the entire path before me and not just stumble into, oh, they weren't very clear about this before. I needed to do X here in order to do Y now kind of issues. My wife does not want to read the instructions. She wants to open the package and have the thing installed minutes later. There's no time to read and analyze her schedule. It very often leads to conflict. The instructions are there for a reason, guys. Story 6. I've heard real men don't drink tea? Is this an American versus European thing? It actually reminds me of a funny story. This guy was going to his girlfriend's house to meet her cop father for the first time. The guy came from a pretty privileged background and he knew his girl's father already disliked him based on that fact alone. When he got there, the dad offered him hot tea in a cup without a handle. The dude was like, I could tell this was a test of some sort, so I picked up that scalding hot cup and just held it, slowly sipping away. I could literally feel my fingerprints burning off, but I held that cup like a man, and I passed the test. Her dad loosened up a little after that. I suffered some serious burns, but well worth it. That one might have been personal, but who doesn't like tea? Story 7. 
Wanna be tough guy. Real men don't cook. Only women and gay men cook. Me. What about male chefs like Gordon Ramsay? Response A, they're closeted gay men, or response B, a chef is a paid position so it doesn't count. This is so weird. Only women do sewing work unless it's a tailor, then it's a man. Only women cook unless it's a chef, then it's a man. Only women do yard work unless it's a gardener, then it's a man. There are probably more of these. Someone pointed out the big factor of serving. The aspect of to serve to others in a household or something like that. It was a post slash comment here on Reddit. Serving is preferred because otherwise it's a profession. And then there's money earning involved. Welp, step aside, woman. That's a man's job. Does that mean only men can be employed? Story 8. Use umbrellas? This one is hilarious and true. I once went across the street from my apartment to pick up a pizza in the rain using an umbrella to keep dry, and a group of guys about my age were running from awning to awning getting absolutely soaked. As I walked past, one of them was like, nice umbrella, in a very condescending tone. At least one of his friends goes, dude, we are literally soaking and you're making fun of his umbrella. It was pretty funny. I've also heard when you turn 18, you can no longer use one regardless of gender. Apparently water droplets just bounce off of you. All the adults rejoice under the pouring rain, please. Story 9. My former boss would die on the hill of real men don't use rolling suitcases. He'd sooner throw out his shoulder carrying a heavy duffel bag than ever be caught dead rolling a suitcase through the airport. Forgot to add, he also thinks neck pillows are fruity and can't stand when men wear them around their neck on planes. Also, regarding the comments about the benefits of hiking backpacks, I don't think I ever saw him sporting a two-strap. Fellas, is it gay to have even weight distribution on your shoulders? Fun fact, unrelated to the whole real men don't do X thing, the wheeled suitcase was invented surprisingly late. Like, we take them for granted now, but it was first patented in 1972. We just never figured out how to attach, like our species' fifth invention. Shit that rolls to our species' third invention thing to carry things while moving moving, until well after we'd been to the goddamn moon. Way to just create more problems for yourself. Story 10. Once saw a woman on Twitter say something like, if a man is too eager when the free bread gets to the table, that's sus. And I was just blown away by that one. My partner, a surgeon, and me, an engineer, went to an Italian restaurant for our anniversary. We ate so much bread with too much bread. We could not order normal meals. We basically had wine and bread and tipped our waiter like 50%. The bread is yummy. PSA, regardless of who you are, get that bread. Story 11. Real men don't show their own children affection or accept affection from them, apparently. I think this one is more of a boomer American thing, which is probably why it isn't higher up. There are a few things that I think have changed. Dads have come from fathers that seldom said, I love you, or showed love and vowed never to do that. We're more of a multicultured country, and different cultures tend to show and express their love differently. This happened to my dad. His dad used to just fuck off and go play golf all weekend and work overtime at work. Never saw him except on public holidays or birthdays. My dad and his brothers never had a father figure growing up, and then he went and died once he was a young man. He barely knew him. My dad has always struggled to teach me the things that fathers teach their sons, how to tie knots, light a fire, write in invisible ink, etc. But he has always tried to be there for me no matter what. I love him so much and I'm sorry he was denied that bond growing up. Anyone can be a dad, but it takes a real man to be a father. Story 12 I was at Joanne's and the man behind me in line was buying something for his wife and didn't have any coupons. I told him about the app and the website and offered to pull up my coupons for him to use. He laughed and said boys don't use coupons. So weird. It's free money. How fragile is your masculinity that you pay full price when you don't have to? You see, he was in Joanne's Fabrics, a place that real men would never voluntarily be. But he was buying something for his wife, so it's acceptable. However, actively trying to engage with the business at any level more than absolutely necessary? Nah, too girly. How can a fabric store be too girly? Story 13. I was told that really men never look at their nails with their palms down and would only ever look at their nails with their palms up and fingers curled. I gotta wonder how secure in your masculinity you've got to be to spend time even thinking about the right way to look at your nails. I remember asking a girl to dance. We were good friends and she was straight but only ever in relationships for a week at most. She said maybe, then told me my fingernail was bleeding. When I looked I did the palm down thing because that just felt the most natural in that moment and she promptly told 
told me I was too feminine for her because men should look at their fingernails with their palms up. That confused me because I've always associated women filing their nails palm up and had never thought about this before that moment. I'm 30 now and it still confuses me. Look at your nails in whatever way lets you see them properly at the moment. What the fuck is this masculine feminine shit? No, my nail wasn't bleeding. She was testing me. That's just a new level of crazy. Story 14. There was a post on Reddit somewhere a while back of a guy remembering his dad chastising him for saying good morning to another man at the laundromat. His dad said that saying good morning to another man would make him think, you're sweet, which in this context, I assume, means that people will think you're gay if you say good morning. Honestly, some of the dumbest shit I have ever heard, and I bet that guy's dad could suck the chrome off of a doorknob. My ex had a somewhat similarly weird belief, but about a different topic. We were at a fancy restaurant, and at the end of the night I said thanks have a nice evening to the waitress after she brought over the check. He turned to me and literally was like, oh my god, you don't talk like that to the waitstaff in a restaurant like this, it shows you're low class. And he was actually upset, saying that I made us look poor by saying that sentence to the waitress. Basically we argued about it all the way home, and his firm opinion was that you should not say friendly casual things to anyone serving you, cashiers, bank tellers, waiters, etc, because then you seem low class, and employees actually end up not respecting you for it, lol. To this day I say have have a great day in any shop or restaurant. I just have to think about him and like, how can you go through life actually believing shit like that? It's surprising how some people grow up and become actual adults without realizing what they really sound like. I've worked in the service industry in the past and the rich people I respected the most were the ones who were friendly and kind. Story 15 drink fruity cocktails. Dude, my cocktail has five spirits in it. It's way more alcohol than your less than 4% beer and it tastes nice. A friend of mine was drinking a hurricane in a bar one time and some big burly biker looking dude with a beer started giving him shit. My friend replied, at least I'm drinking liquor. The biker stopped, thought about it, then ordered himself a hurricane. A couple of minutes later, another biker gave the first one shit and the first biker responded, at least I'm drinking liquor, and high-fived my friend. Tiki drinks are pretty and have a heroic amount of booze in them. Anyone who thinks that should go pound a zombie cocktail then come back and apologize while thanking me for getting them really buzzed on one drink. If it has to taste bad to be manly, what's the point? Story 16. Real men don't lift under, insert weight. Everyone has to start somewhere, dickhead. I have been lifting for years, but when I see a new kid try lifting crazy heavy with bad form, I warn him it's a good way to get hurt. If they don't listen, then that's on them. Ego lifting will get you hurt and discourage you from continuing a fitness program. I have new exercisers that start out so easy a child could do the workout and then eject them from the gym. They are so fired up to continue that it's easy to gradually increase increase over time. The gym ain't going nowhere, buddy, but you will if you start out too heavy. In high school, I was very strong, but my strongest muscle was my ego. I leg pressed way more than I should have for way more reps than I should have. I still have knee pain to this day, which has ironically led to back pain on the other side for overcompensating for my knee on my other side. I'm almost 30 and have a handful of aches and pains from when I did heavy powerlifting. I still have a ton more muscle than I ever need, so I'm not going to try and go that heavy again while I can still walk and move my body the way I want 99.9% .9 of the time. Throw out your back or break your bones, but real men are strong, okay? Story 17. Cry. Literally everyone cries. Real men don't cry. Real men bottle their feelings up, swallow them, drown them in alcohol, and let them ferment inside them until they form the perfect combination of rage and self-loathing. Then open it all up to the people they love, push them away, and suffer from poor mental health for the rest of their lives. That's what real men do. Sarcasm. I feel like this isn't needed, but you never know. I've also had issues with this. Sorry if this is too forward, but the thing that helped me the most was learning how anger in itself is not an act of emotion. It's an emotion that is always caused caused by another emotion. Could be fear, jealousy, or love, etc, 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 but at the end of the day, the anger doesn't come from nowhere. It has a source, just up to you, either on your own or with the help of a professional, to do the really uncomfortable deep introspective investigation to figure out what that source is. Broad strokes, obviously, but I hope it helps in some way, and do not call me a twat and we'll both move on from here. This whole generation just needs therapy. Story 18. 
My dad told me once, men don't say anything. And frankly, I agree. A man should speak eloquently, be sure to enunciate, say specifically what you mean. Besides, there are way better words than thingy. For example, doohickey, thingamajig, whatchamacallit, or who's what's it are my favorites. I work at a hardware store and can confirm that thingy will get no valid response. Any of the other terms mentioned and I will just look at what's in your hand and take you right over like you said flush valve, 45 degree skewed joist hanger, or 3 inch 30 degree paper collated framing nails. Thingy? I'm going to need you to be more specific and then wait for their brain to materialize some definition that's more specific than the name for my penis when I was in second grade. Hey, sometimes you just forget what things are called. Story 19. Hug their sons. My dad hugged my brother for the first time when he was 18 and graduated high school. Dad was raised by his parents to not show outward love towards his children because that would spoil us. Our childhood was odd. The first and last time I saw my dad cry was when his bird hunting dog died, as he dug the hole to bury it in their backyard. The older generations were tougher, sure, but I know my dad would have benefited greatly from being hugged more as a child. That shit gets passed down. My father was born in 1929, so he was truly old school on a lot of things, but he was very enlightened in others. He was all about physical affection. He was almost famous for his hugs, and enjoyed knowing people of all kinds, regardless of race or gender. However, he was a firm believer in not showing certain emotions. He yelled at my older brother for crying when he broke his arm. The only time I ever saw him cry was when my younger brother died by suicide, and even then only a little. He also got mad when, after the wake, we all sat around sharing funny stories about my brother. He said that the laughing was inappropriate. Also, I only remember him saying I love you to me twice. Both were during my adulthood. The first time, he surprised me by saying it as I was leaving after a visit. The second was right before he died. It was over the phone. He died of COVID in 2020, and no one could go see him. The generational trauma being passed down is so real. Story 20 wave, cry, do desk jobs, sing, show emotion, show love, be good fathers, be ill, be poor, not fight, have female friends. I've heard so many stupid stereotypes being born in 75. I still won't cry after my older brother beat the crap out of me anytime I did as a kid. A few years ago, I had mentioned I haven't cried since I was in my early teens, and he had the audacity to say real men cry. How can you even put that many restrictions on people? Story 21 well, despite the fact that I'm a 210-pound masculine former rugby player who drives a pickup and has been married to the same woman for 31 years, I am in fact gay because I cook, I like grande no-whip mocha, I wash my behind, I say good morning to other dudes, I sometimes drink fruity cocktails, I like chocolate, desserts, and sometimes Luna bars, I use a rolling suitcase and wear sunscreen, I like the occasional rom-com and British period piece, Geez, it's amazing I'm not living in a bathhouse. What the fuck? Same here. The first time I ever had a Luna bar was from a care package that someone sent us while deployed in Iraq. I checked the ingredients, no estrogen, and tasted okay. Have fun calling me gay or beta, I know who I am. Men are fully functioning humans, capable of doing anything they want. Story 22. Candace Owens of The Daily Wire recounted an anecdote of how, when her grandmother died, her grandfather didn't cry at her funeral. She says she wants to live in a society like that, where men never cry ever, even at the funeral of their spouse of 40 plus years. I am, of course, not knocking Candace's grandfather. Different people process grief in different ways, but Candace's gatekeeping of proper manly decorum at their wife's funeral is positively demented. This has happened to a friend of mine. His girlfriend literally said to his face while breaking up with him that I've lost all sexual attraction to you when I saw you cry at your dad's funeral. Yep, shit is fucked. My dad passed away when I was a teenager. He was my world. Decades later, I only have one memory from his funeral. I sat there with tears streaming down my face, family and friends passing by offering their condolences, hugs, etc. My great aunt stops in front of me, grabs the back of my neck, stares at me for a bit, then tells me to straighten up, rolls her eyes, and walks away. Why are people so obsessed with men's tears? Story 23 Real men don't have cats. Laughable. Cats are some of nature's most efficient killers. Ask any number of birds around your neighborhood. Oh wait, you can't because they're dead. Whenever there's a post on social media of a dude handling his cat, it's guaranteed that there will be many comments on how attractive it is for dudes to care for their cats. The irony. There's nothing more fierce than a cat, okay? 
Story 24. I recently saw, if you're a straight man and go see the Barbie movie, you're 100% a beta. I thought, I'm so sorry that someone called you a beta once and that ever since you've been critical of your fellow man by ham-fistedly dissecting everyone's choices through an arbitrary and nonsensical social hierarchy platform that only exists to a few and matters to less. That kind of thinking is how we get Nazis, bruh. You could do with some content that boldly and artistically tackles some questions of who we are in the universe and society and what real support and true friendship look like. Maybe go see Barbie. If a guy's insecurities restrict him from seeing a movie, that doesn't seem very alpha. Seems kinda beta. Real men define what being a man means for themselves based on their individual preferences and experiences, not based on colloquial, arbitrary rules that change constantly. When men refer to themselves as alpha males, I hear that in the context of software, where alpha versions are unstable, missing important features, filled with flaws and not fit for the public, would much rather be a beta. At least it's been somewhat tested, and for the most part, works, but needs some tweaks ironed out. Your Kenuff. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Story 25. The Home Improvement Video Game. If you ever played the Home Improvement video game, yes, the Tim Allen sitcom for Super Nintendo, I hope you were intuitive. If you tried to look in the book, it came with the instructions were blocked out with a big red stamp, real men don't need instructions. Appropriate since it was a mind-bogglingly stupid game. I think it's funny that Tim Allen seems to have completely missed the point of the show that he helped write, which propelled him to stardom in the 90s. That entire show centers around Tim getting his ass kicked whenever he relies relies on solely his masculinity in situations, and instead learning to overcome his toxic masculinity to become a better husband, father, friend, and overall a better man. I've watched a few episodes of Last Man Standing, and it's basically the exact same show without any of the understanding or nuance. What's the hate towards instructions? Why do you want to figure it out yourself? Story 26. Change diapers. We had four kids and I was a union steel worker. I took a withdrawal on the union card because the cost of daycare for children was just ridiculous. So my wife, who was a school teacher, carried the benefits and I stayed home with our last kid. I had more than one iron worker tell me that real men don't change diapers. I asked them what they would do if their kid had a dirty diaper and they all said the same thing. They would have to sit in it until the wife got home. It was then that I realized how ignorant these guys were. Jesus fucking Christ. I honestly thought thought diaper changing would bother me more before becoming a dad. I never changed one before that, and I'm a bit squeamish about body fluids and smells. Almost immediately I would get excited to see a shitty diaper when I changed him because I would always guess that it probably meant he was feeling better. I like it when my son is relieved and feels good because I love him and I want him to be comfortable and happy. His smile is absolutely the light of my life. I can't even imagine a headspace where I'd prefer that he be uncomfortable in his own mess for an indeterminate period period of time. What a cold, sad world these men must live in. If it's your baby, do the damn work. Story 27. Real men don't take more than one trip to bring in the groceries. I support this one, and I support it while also supporting 17 grocery bags and fumbling my keys to unlock the door. I don't care about the man part though, I just don't like little runt groceries telling me I should make two trips. I cry. I drink delicious fruity drinks. I take care of my two beautiful kitties. I am vulnerable with my friends. I'll paint my nails. I'll spend all day in the kitchen cooking and cleaning, but I'll be goddamned before I take more than one trip to bring in the groceries. Clearly, their fingers have never died from all the bags. Story 28. Anything behind that is stupid. Literally anything. There is no such thing as real men. If you identify as a man, you are a man. No matter what you wear, how you behave, what you do for a living, and what gender your partner is. This real men don't should go die in a fire, no matter what follows behind it. Yeah, it has kind of the same tone as cool kids don't from middle school. The entire point is to put someone down for not being exactly like you, or for a completely made up reason because there's no actual reason, or to project your own insecurities. New anthem, you do you, boo. Story 29. Real men don't put others first. I have a big family and a lot of my siblings have problems. I do my best to help them, even if it means putting their needs ahead of mine. My ex-fiance thought this made me weak. A real man doesn't take care of other people. He puts himself first and takes what he wants. Going out of my way to help my brother, lending him money when he needed it, spending time giving him advice, made me a little bitch in her eyes. We're no longer together. I remember seeing a post about how the father of the family was right and just. 
that he always eats first and everyone else comes after him. I don't know what kind of weird bullshit that is, but if you're even going to play this game at all, I'd say a real man would make sure the people depending on him have eaten before he does. If one of us has to go hungry between my wife, my son, and I, I can't imagine a universe where I allow any sequence of events that doesn't end up with me going hungry. This one's just plain stupid. Story 30. When I was 14 or so, I got my left ear pierced. An older cousin of mine worked at Piercing Pagoda in the mall, mid-90s, and he did it for me. When my father noticed, he was beside himself and went on and on about me being a sissy. I removed it right away. Anyway, it turns out that dad was a self-hating closet case. Still is. When I was in high school, a Catholic boy school no less, it became rebelliously trendy to wear an earring. But the rule was left is right, right is wrong. For apparently no reason whatsoever except right rhyme schemes. I've had both piercings ever since I graduated. Piercings don't have a gender. Story 31. Apologize? Real men don't apologize. And it was me who said it and believed it. As a young adult, I refused to apologize. My behavior was either intentional and I wouldn't apologize because I meant it, or accidental and I wouldn't apologize because I didn't create it. I'm not that man anymore. I apologize to anyone I need to and have atoned to those who deserved my apology in the past. I was a fucking idiot. Honestly, I don't even know where my no apology doctrine came from. My dudes, apologize for what you do wrong. Hurt disrespectful, etc. If you don't show compassion for the feelings of others, then you're boxing them in as non-humans in your mind. Be kind. If you're wrong, own up to it. Story 32. My dad took us to the beach one day. Everybody was stripping off their shirts and punching each other and being stupid while I stood off to the side. My dad came up to me and lectured me about how real men take their shirts off outside. Huh? and ridiculed me about being a woman. I still refused and the whole rest of the day everybody made fun of me for being a woman and kept trying to rip my shirt off. Just in case it's not clear, I'm male. They were trying to insult me by calling me a woman. It didn't work. Hey man, the 1800s called and they want their mindset back. Story 33. Real men don't eat bananas. I just went to a bachelor party where I was the only gay man. I flew in from out of town, so I asked the person buying the food for the weekend to get me some bananas for my breakfast. No one else would eat a banana that weekend. One guy even cracked a joke about how it was gay to eat a banana. When I eat a banana, I'm thinking about a banana. If you think about a penis when you see a banana, maybe you have some unresolved issues. I would have eaten that banana while making awkward eye contact with all of them. Story 34. Real men don't speak French. When we were kids, my mother would speak to us in French and my dad in English. By pure coincidence, every other bilingual couple we knew was doing it the same way around. So when my little brother was four, he decided men spoke English and women spoke French. He still understood French perfectly, but he refused to speak it. He'd also burst into tears when he heard an adult speaking the wrong language for their gender. My mother told the school about this when she registered him for kindergarten. They put him in a class with a male francophone teacher, and he got over himself pretty quickly. I'm pretty sure speaking French would get you way more ladies than if you didn't. Thanks for watching until the end. If you have a similar story to these that you would like to share with us, please leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and be sure to subscribe. For more videos like this one right now, please stop by our channel. Thanks again and see you next time.